I have lots of updates, so I'm a little on the sick side. That might sound kind of funky, but the animals have a lot going on, so I figured I'd update you anyway. You know, because animals are cool and exciting. So anyway, um, I'll update you now. So for starters, I got the scorpion I wanted, um, but I did have to move her into this 10 gallon tank because the five gallon um, didn't end up working out due to the humidity, the plexiglass actually bent. So she's in a 10 gallon, which is just uh, coconut fiber, cypress mulch, sphagnum moss, and leaf litter. She's got a little water dish, some fake plants, and um, a log to hide under. I went ahead and added some plexiglass to this mesh lid so that the humidity would hold in a little better. But yeah, it's a pretty chill setup. Uh, it is bioactive with springtails, although I would like to redo it and add a drainage layer and real plants um, because I feel like that's better. So after I brought her home, she actually had 16 babies. Uh, let's just say this is how I found out she was a girl. They <laughs> are eating, growing, molting, doing all the scorpion stuff. You can see one of them right there. I have them in separate containers so I can track their progress and their eating and everything and make sure everybody's um, healthy. Oh, there's TJ. Hi, TJ. So not all of them have names, but um, most of them do. And yeah, uh, they're, they're doing well. I plan to keep them and take care of them for as long as I can, and then I'll eventually sell them. Although, uh, I'm enjoying taking care of a little scorpion nursery at the moment, so yeah, it's been pretty cool. Been pretty cool. Next on the list of updates is that I was actually able to upgrade Phoenix to this small, tall Exoterra. I've got the full drainage layer set up down here, once again with the um, cypress mulch, coconut fiber, sphagnum moss, and leaf litter. Uh, he's got two live plants. He's got this little vine plant, which he pooped on before I started recording, and this little plant here, which he likes to sleep inside these leaves, which is so cute. I did wait to upgrade him to this until he was a little bigger because I wanted him to be able to uh, find his food dish okay. So for a while he was in a small little 10 gallon while he was growing to get bigger, but now he's quite a bit bigger. So, oh, he's over there hanging out in his water dish. So yeah, uh, this was super cool and I would highly suggest doing a setup like this to anyone. It was honestly worth the money just to buy the Exoterra, which is a little more expensive. It's really cool and it looks really good. It's very functional, and honestly, it was completely worth it, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Next up, we have Theo the Spiny Mouse. So, I was at Repticon uh, a little while ago, and I came across a guy who had spiny mice, and little Theo here just caught my attention, and I got to hold him, and I ended up taking him home. So, yeah, as you can see, he likes to destroy his cage just a little bit. So he's currently in this 20 gallon because it was kind of a last minute deal, but my plan is actually to build a second level and add hanging bridges for him to climb on. But he is a spiny mouse, so he's very interesting. Oh, <laughs> and yeah, he's, he's becoming very friendly over time. He's not fully tame yet. Um, he's been a little bit more difficult to tame than your typical um, house mouse or like pet store mouse, which I think has been a fun experience. I've enjoyed kind of learning the ins and outs of the spiny mice. Um, but he is honestly the cutest little guy. And just like all mice, he's very curious, so it's been really fun watching him explore, and he's become very, very friendly, even though he's not really super used to being handled yet. He still is interested, and will hop in and out of my hand. My goal would be to do videos specifically on spiny mice once I have the knowledge and I've had him for a while. Obviously right now, I only just got him, so I don't think I know enough to make informational videos on spiny mice. But there really aren't that many, um, so I would like to cover it eventually once I'm comfortable with the topic and I have hands-on experience with spiny mice in particular. I do have lots of experience with mice, but spiny mice are quite a bit different, I would say, just personality-wise and the fact that they're more exotic. So yeah, so he's super sweet and I'm very excited to kind of get to know him and share more about him with you guys. And he's honestly just the cutest little guy. I mean, tell me that that's not the cutest little thing. Look at him. He looks like a possum mixed with a mouse and like a hedgehog. And it's honestly the cutest thing you've ever seen. So, yes. I will continue to update on him and eventually I'm gonna make videos on spiny mice and everything. 
yes, he is honestly just the cutest little guy. <laughs> and last but not least, I have an empty 40 gallon down here. And my hopes are to get a fire skink. If you've never seen what a fire skink looks like, do yourself a favor and um, look at pictures of them because they're very pretty and cool looking, although they are kind of hard to find. So I'm going to NARBC this weekend, which is the North American Reptile Breeders Conference, I believe is the proper... Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm going to that and I've had a lot of people tell me that I could probably find fire skanks there. So my goal would be to um, actually get one <laughs> and finally set up a tank for it. And they get, they get about um, 10 to 12 inches, I believe, so a 40 gallon would be a proper size. I would like to set this up with a full-on drainage layer, live plants, full-on bioactive, gorgeous foresty setup, but um, I would probably start without the um, drainage layer with the baby, just so that I have an easier way of just substrate, clean it out myself, keep track of the baby and their eating and their pooping and everything, and then uh, upgrade it slowly because the hydro balls do get kind of weirdly expensive. So yeah, I'm excited for that. So we'll see how that goes in the scheme of um, finding one at the little conference. So we'll see, but uh, I hope that's gonna be a thing that happens and I will be sure to let everyone know if that ends up happening. Ignore the guinea pigs being loud in the background. <laughs>